I have recorded this video twice. The first time I recorded it, my video was 26 minutes and 21 seconds long. The second time I recorded it, it was 19 minutes and 56 minutes long. I'm gonna aim as close as I can to 10 minutes. Let's go. So I was on Twitter earlier on today and I made a tweet. It was, I wonder how many less killings there would be if America actually put in some decent gun control laws. A guy by the name of at Hendershot underscore Tom, I'm gonna bait him out because I don't give a fuck. He says, nobody here cares what you think about the US Constitution. Last time the British thought Americans shouldn't have guns, went sent them home with their tails between their legs. I think he meant were sent, uh, were sent home or we sent them home with their tails between their legs. Uh, how many less stabbings would you have if you hadn't taken the guns from your law abiding citizens? I think that you are really, really stupid, first of all. And second of all, um, if you take, if you didn't take the guns away from the people, then you might have less stabbings, but guess what? You would have more shootings, Tom. You would, you would have more shootings. That doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't, are you brain dead anyway? Oh man, he's so stupid. Anyway, I feel very, very strongly about gun control in America, right? That's the reason why my first video was 26 minutes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload both videos. Um, I'm gonna upload this video, which is gonna be a nice, short, sweet version. And then there's gonna be a link in the description for um, the long version, okay? And that long version's not gonna be pr um, public. It's gonna be like um, an unlisted viewing. So the only way for you to watch this video is for you to watch like, you know, you have to have an actual interest in it, right? Um, but yeah. Let me just quickly do my thing on this right now. Usually what I do is I give two sides of the argument. Um, so, you know, you, you're able to see both sides and then I also give my own opinion and then you can go with it. Honestly, I can't think of any logical argument you can give in defense of looser gun control laws. In defense of keeping the pre-existing gun control laws, the only argument I could come up with and could reasonably find was simply the fact that it is um, a violation of your Second Amendment rights if you look at the wording of it. Now, the exact wording of the Second Amendment in the US Constitution is, and I, I quote, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Okay? So, looking at the word infringed, the definition of infringe, of infringe and infringement according to Google is the action of breaking the terms of a law, agreement, etc. Violation, right? Or the action of limiting or undermining something. So, with gun control, which is inherently just about restriction, limit, limiting, right? That already straight away just means, okay, cool. You're, because you're limiting a person's ability to keep and bear arms, it, that, that already means that it's a violation of the amendment. That's the only argument I can come up with realistically. Um, but honestly, like I said, I'm very, I'm very passionate about this and I, I honestly believe that more strict gun control laws are needed. Um, I, I, th I think that you, you just need to do it because when it comes to the Second Amendment, right, let's look at the wording specifically. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Let's look at the whole damn amendment, right? A lot of people always talk about the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. People look at that part a whole bunch. That is half the amendment. The other half of the amendment talks about a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. Why does no one talk about that? What does that mean? There are two schools of thought when it comes to this discussion. One side thinks that the amendment provides collective rights to a state militia as protection and, and that's protection against the, uh, the um, official militia. So... If Donald Trump one day goes mad and he's like, yo, you know what? I'm making this a dictatorship, Lego. Yo, army, storm every state, kill them all who oppose me, 
I'm pressing the hell out of everybody. I'm doing my thing. Each and every state has the right to set up their own squad of folks who are well regulated. So that means that these people are trained and you know what I mean? They're armed up like, you know, these are the people that are ready to ride out for the for their state. For the state of Texas, right? All my people are here with me and we're able to fight Donald Trump's government and army because the second amendment allows us to do that so that's one side of people thinking right the collective rights of uh, to a state militia the other side interprets it as individual rights for americans so it doesn't matter who you are if you're an american right then you have a right to bear and keep arms in defense in in self-defense against again the uh, army right so if again donald trump wants the army to rise up and start conquering everybody everybody in america is allowed to have their own guns and they're allowed to combat um the military and it's your it's your right as an american to have that so what what's what's your interpretation of the second amendment and what do you think like is it just collective rights or is it individual rights like i said i i I think that it's the first of all i side with it being the first interpretation that you can't ignore the wording of it a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed so if you have a well-regulated militia and their job is to make sure that the free state that, that everyone in the state is safe and make sure that everyone is free and everyone is protected, that you you guys who are in the militia have the right to have arms, that makes sense to me in the wording of the Second Amendment. Why people will interpret that as just um, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, as in like all Americans, I don't quite understand that. And you've got to understand that this is a law that was written back in 1791. December 7, December 1791 is when the law was ratified. Um, this was back in the time where it was bayonets. So you, you shot once, you had to reload it, you shoot again. Boom. That was the type of firearm that they were dealing with back then. It You, you couldn't... You, you literally couldn't do a mass shooting the same way back then as you can now because technology has changed so i think that the law needs to update itself as well it it just makes sense move with the times what was cool back then isn't cool now and um you know it it we have laws that change that so why don't we also do the same with gun laws do you see what i mean like it may it just makes sense um but arguing against it Look, I could go, I, I literally could go on and on and on about um, the arguments against what currently stands and putting in more strict gun control. But just to rat- rattle off a few stats very, very quickly, right? Um, about 40% of Americans own a gun or live in a household with one. They have the highest rate of murder or manslaughter by firearm in the developed world. of all homicides in the US are the result of firearms, according to stats in 2017. In comparison, the UK is 3%, Canada's 38%, Australia is 13%. Per 100 people in the US, um, there are 120.5 guns. The second highest in the world is Yemen with 52.8 guns per 100 people. So, that is literally a gun for each person in america plus some versus one gun between two people in yemen which is the 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 country in the world with the second highest amount of gun ownership um and out of all the guns that commit you know that are responsible for firearm deaths 64 percent of them were caused by handguns four percent are by rifles two percent are by shotguns and two percent are by other types of gun 28% are unknown. They don't know what type of gun was used to commit the crime uh, or or to kill the person. And a handgun, on average, costs $200 in America, which is the price of a Chromebook. 
An assault rifle, however, is $1,500, which is the cost of a MacBook. Let's put that into perspective, right? Like in your house right now, you could probably look around and you can see something that costs more than a handgun in America. My phone right here, which is a Samsung S10, is more expensive than a handgun. My watch, which is a Samsung watch over here, costs more than a handgun in America. My PlayStation 4 is more than a handgun in America. There's probably people with shoes, bags, clothes, um, wallets, perfumes that are more expensive than a handgun in America versus obviously, you know, an assault rifle. But if you look at the percentages, right, 64% of firearm deaths are by handgun and 4% are by rifles. If you do the maths on that, that means that eight times as many deaths were by handgun than rifle. That's an eight to one ratio. Let's look at the price of a rifle versus a handgun. $1,500 versus $200. That is seven and a half times the amount. So it's funny, right, that like the gun that is basically eight times cheaper than a rifle is responsible for eight times as more deaths. Because it's eight times easier to get your hands on that gun, basically. Seven and a half, basically, really. I mean, come on, like, I'm, that's, the stats are just there. I'm just interpreting them, you know what I mean? I'm just interpreting the stats. The stats are there, I'm just, I didn't make this shit up, you know what I mean? But, look, I have a way longer video that goes into so much depth about not only the stats, but also gun control laws in Japan, which are extremely tough tight and i think some of the best gun control laws that make absolute sense and i think really should be applied to america um bar maybe one or two of those um gun control laws right but what do you guys think just off of this quick little discussion that we've had over here do you think that gun control laws need to be tightened in america do you think that they should stay the same as they are because like the uh, second amendment says um the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed or are you one of the people who I think is absolutely crazy and stupid, but you're one of the people who thinks that the gun control laws actually need to be lessened? Let me know in the comment section below, guys. Please do check out the longer video if you can, if you've got the time to do so, because there's so much information in there. Um, but, you know, let's have a real, a, a real good discussion, okay? Much love, guys.